Greetings all, we are back. No men in the box today, because, well, I'm just being lazy. Uh, let's see what's going on in the news. Uh, Elon Musk is back to tweeting out stuff and messing up people's day, and apparently he got the point, and now as he's only messing with really, really, really tiny rank 6,000 uh, market cap coins, he tweeted out a picture of his dog and said, Floki has arrived. And, yeah, it's a cute dog. That would be a, sh a little baby Shiba Inu. And this apparently is someone figured out that he must be tweeting about crypto, right? So we uh, take a look, and, yep, sure enough, we got Floki, the cryptocurrency that's worth one one millionth of a penny. And, uh, yeah, the news is that it jumped from being worth nothing to going up a 1,000% and still continuing to be worth nothing. So that's why you don't invest in meme coins or think that there will be anything to them. But uh, yeah, good for Elon. Good for Elon. As far as news and uh, goodies like that, there's not a whole lot. The market is still pretty shook up because the IMF be playing, playing around with the markets. Uh, but it's not a big deal. It's a good time to buy. And we will get a little bit more into that as I want to go over. Um, how to use a regular standard exchange. Of course, I'm trying to get people involved into cryptocurrency that have never been involved in it before. And of course, I say like, well, just use a Coinbase or something, right? If you're just going up and uh, you're, you're just doing something basic and you just want to buy a little Bitcoin and hold on to it, you just go to a Coinbase. And yeah, the fees are a little high, right? The fees are a little bit high. They're like 4% or something. But if you're buying once and you're holding on to it, or your dollar cost averaging every couple of weeks or once a month, um, that's not really a, a huge deal. Um, the simplicity of the interface and, and, you know, real nice and straightforward to look at at a glance on your phone. And there's nothing wrong with the Coinbase. Now it is, you know, deeply tied with the state. It's almost like a bank compared to other things. But if you if you don't want to get super deep into trading and anything like that and you just want to buy some bitcoin or um, some ethereum or some of the big players here there's just do that but if you're purchasing you know maybe 20 bucks at a time or 50 dollars at a time and you want to continually do this and buy many different assets and things like that you want to use coinbase pro or the equivalent of a coinbase pro and that is what we are going to be talking about. First, though, I do want to go into the dollar cost averaging we've been doing. And uh, it was Monday, so we did our hundred dollars roughly. It was like one fifteen or so into our into our portfolios. Now, like this investment portfolio is one that I would set up, and these are the things that I would buy. Uh, we started with one thousand dollars. This is the fourth or fifth week I believe for dollar cost averaging so it's up to 1842 after either 14 or fifteen hundred dollars initial investment um, so it says it's up about seven point six percent off the initial investment about 300 up 350 or four hundred and fifty dollars on uh, in about a month you know pretty pretty decent return there a little over a month maybe and this is the slow portfolio okay when the market is kind of rocky and doesn't know what it's doing and these are all very high cap which means the price should not be nearly as volatile as some of these gambler coins the magic bean coins that sort of thing and again solana is the winner of the day of course who basically makes any portfolio look good it's a good idea to have some of this stuff if you can buy it for less than 160 i mean even um in the 160s right now everything is pretty cheap and if you're just going to buy it and hold on to it for, you know, six months at least, 165 is not a bad price for that, in my opinion. Um, you can kind of see what's going on there. And you, okay, not, not too bad, not too bad. 1842, it's better than return than any stock's going to get you, better return than any gold's going to get you. And the market is doing pretty bad because they want to play around with Bitcoin because they're mad about El Salvador. But still, Bitcoin is still above 40,000. Not a huge crash. Um, we're just reaccumulating and, and re-going. But we're going to look here at the gambler profile. <gasps> Gambler's not doing as good. 
See, before when I started this, after a couple of weeks, the gambler profile was outpacing the investment profile, which it should. It should. There's a lot higher risk. But I said, you just wait when the market dips and the, the sentiment isn't there. When people move from greed into the fear and the fear index, then the, uh, the gambler profile takes quite a beating. And the only reason it's doing as good as it is, again, is because I've added Solana uh, to the portfolio to really kind of bring it up. Now, I, uh, everything is the same in the investment portfolio. I invested the, the money into Bitcoin. So I think, you know, 44800 or 900 um, I purchased. And I thought, you know, that's a pretty good price, right? Especially if you're dollar cost averaging, you know, the 45000 is a good price on a Bitcoin. Uh, the gambler pro profile, I, Terra Luna has been on a roll. And this is an example of chasing the dragon. Terra Luna was up by like five, six, eight hundred percent. I don't, I don't have own Terra Luna um, because I'd have to sign up for another exchange to get it. And I don't feel like doing that. But this is chasing the dragon. And we'll see what happens with that. This is a, this is a gamble. And so that's what's going on with the... Uh, Comparative. See, with this one, if we're $500 in of our own money dollar cost averaging with the 1000 then this portfolio is only up $174. Whereas the investment portfolio is up $242. Or $342. So the old investment one's doing quite a bit better. And this is an example to show people who want to go run off there and go buy all the Dogecoin and all the Shiba Inus. And whatever the next big thing is that somebody uh, on YouTube says is just, oh, wow, you got to get in right now and you got to get in early and, and all that. Um, that's a gamble. And it's a gamble and it can work out for you um, if you set stop orders and limit orders and you micromanage your portfolio. And today we are going to take a look at micromanaging a portfolio. So I wasn't able to find a very good simulator. So we'll just look at, at Coinbase Pro. You pretty much have to, uh, when you have a Coinbase regular account, you can go to, to pro.coinbase and it will log you right in, you know, if all your credentials are saved. And there is no difference account wise between the pro version and the standard version. However, if you want to move your assets between them, there's no cost, but you actually have to like deposit, like you would be depositing money or you'd be depositing tokens. You'd have to do that and then you select your other Coinbase um, account. Um, so it's the same, but it's different sort of a thing. Um, in order to fund this account, it won't go directly from your bank account to purchase something. You actually have to purchase US, dollar, uh, US dollars, a uh, digital version of it on here in order to purchase. So there's one extra step, but for going through that one extra step, your maker and trader fees are half a percent. So instead of paying, um, if you're buying $50 worth of engine coin, you're going to pay like $2 and 75 cents fees for that. You know, that's a pretty good chunk of what you're actually purchasing for crypto. But on here, that's going to be like 25 cents. Um, so this is what you want to do. And then when you sell it, it'd be another 25 cents, right? The big thing, the big reason that you'd want, want to use something, uh, on a pro version is if you do want to play on the markets and you want to get in Bitcoin at the best price you can, if you want to get into some of these things, or if you want to, if the market tanks, you just want to make sure that your your stuff is sold and secure and you and you have your money and you're not taking any losses you put up limit and stop orders as you can see over here now if i'm on the market tab if i'm on the market tab this is the spot price so whatever it says right here uh one point one dollar and 61 cents 0.85 is is the current spot market price for engine coin that i'm looking at here Okay, so if I go in here and I hit the max button, all the all the money I got in the world is uh, almost a penny. Okay, almost a penny, and um, I can do that, and I can place my buy order, and it will get me 0 .06 engine, is what I will get for that. And that is this is the same as what this is what goes on behind the scenes at your regular old Coinbase account. Now you have all of these 
All of these other numbers and the flashing lights and all that, these are just the buy orders and the sell orders and the spread between them. And you can see who is purchasing absolutely massive quantities um, based on the numbers here. You know, I got one guy here is, who is uh, going to sell 66535 and his price for that is a dollar and sixty two cents. Right. So that's what you have is just a big order books and they have people on this side. And we're going to we're going to buy at a dollar sixty one points, a uh, dollar sixty one six. Right. And he's going to buy eleven thousand engine. So you can see this and you can see this is what I mean. Um, this is different than the stock market a bit and that you can see all of the orders, all the buys and all the sells and where everybody is at with it. So in some sense, it's a little bit more fair. People can still, of course, manipulate markets and all of that. And we'll show you actually a little bit of how that's done. Um, we go in here and it also you get this sort of a instead of just a basic line graph, you get um, the buy and sell in the closings. And this one is set to closing uh, by the hour. So if it's a red candle or green candle, whether or not the price was up or down for that hour or for that minute or 15 minutes, whatever you want to set it to. Um, and here you can do, you know, you can draw your little funky technical analysis lines if you really feel like it. Um, and it does have some, a nice tool in here where you can see the, uh, the, the averages, right? Um, it's the monthly rotating averages. I forget exactly the acronym for it but essentially where it is over a certain number of week period, right? So I'm guessing 26 week and a 12 week period, which is actually very helpful for, for plotting investments. So you see like where we're at now, we're kind of like right on the line, exactly where we should be for, uh, for engine coin. You can also use just the regular line graph. Uh, there's just a lot more tools in this. And there's even more than this that, because I don't spend a ton of time in here, but I'm sure that there's all of, all of the little little tips and tricks and all of the little tracking things you can do um, on here as compared to the, the regular old Coinbase. So now that we got that part covered and to what things cost, I have my whopping nine cents and um, I want to, I want to buy something, but I don't want to buy it on the spot price. I actually want to create a limit order what a limit order is going to do for me is let's say down here uh, price is currently a dollar sixty one but I don't want to pay that so I want to pay one dollar and fifty cents right and I'm gonna spend every last almost a penny that I have my nine cents and that's gonna give me that much engine coin okay and then you place that order and it shows up in your order book and if the price goes to a dollar fifty, whatever it is, you don't have to be around or do anything. It's locked in, and you don't pay anything to do this. Okay, you don't pay anything. Once this order fills, then you pay your half a percent of whatever your order is uh, to Coinbase for processing that order for you. But there you go, and you place your buy order, and you know you might get lucky. You're fishing a little bit, right? And as volatile as the market is, you can get some really good deals if you really, really want something. Um, it was less than a week ago. I would think it was the September 7th crash. I think um, Solana went to a, uh, 132, down from like 190 down to 132 in a flash crash. And if you had, you know, a, a market limit order set for like $150, you're really really good we're in 150 140 somewhere in there is how you can uh sort of force getting in at a bottom right this is how you get in at the bottoms it's not because you time it perfectly when you're sitting there watching the markets no it's because you have a limit order <laughs> um and that is how that is done and the order stays open until the order is filled and uh that's that's how that is it's until it's filled or until it's canceled now a stop order in the buying sense is the same thing except nobody sees it um and it's processed all at once and on, on, the, on the buying side i'm not sure exactly what the difference between a limit and a stop other than a stop order nobody can see it right people can see these orders up here 
If you have a uh, a stop order, it does not. You don't show up in this list, so it's kind of hidden from everybody. So the people who want to manipulate the market, they're the ones that have all of these stops put in there that nobody can see, and that is what happens. And a lot of other people, these are you know on the sell side of things, right? These are called a stop loss. So, for instance, I run a stop loss on a couple of things that I don't expect them to ever actually get to that price. But if they do, I want to make sure that my my uh, crypto gets rolled into US dollars or US dollar coin. Typically, I'm going to go to a, a stable coin. But um, this way, let's see if engine coin is at $1.62 now, our stop price is going to be $1.50. And uh, I don't have any engine, so it doesn't really matter. And the limit price. I'm not exactly sure how to operate that. I always just put the same number in both and then it's executed. Um, I would assume it's like a stop stop where if the price falls, it, it's executed as soon as you um, have it as, as soon as the price hits a dollar fifty. But if you have too much to sell, um, you can in some exchanges, it will just keep selling even though the price goes lower and lower. So you get a chunk of your order filled at a dollar fifty. And then you get the rest of your order filled at $1.40 or $1.20 or 99 cents or whatever. It just keeps falling. And perhaps the limit price means just stop selling it if it goes even lower than uh, than your $1.50 or whatever. Um, but that is your stop loss. And those don't show up anywhere. You don't know where people's stop losses are. But you can do the same thing with limit orders. Limit orders will show up. And the advantage to doing that is... If somebody has um, a large amount, if you have a large amount of, um, in this case, engine coin, if you have a large amount to sell, okay, you're up here and you're one of these guys, I have 65,000 engine coin, right? But I only want to take this price for it. Well, if someone down here wants to buy a large supply and they don't want to go through all these different spot things and set up all these orders, they can just click on your order and fill it. That's what it is. It'll, it gives you the choice of kind of sort of who you want to buy for and at what exact price you want to buy for. I'm not sure the total advantages to that, but that is how that would work. And the limit orders again, this, the buy sell limit orders are the ones that are visible up in here. Um, really the only reason I could see that someone who is new in crypto is going to use this stuff is you're going to use a buy limit order to say, you know, <clears throat> Bitcoin goes down to 41,000. I have a limit order put in for as much Bitcoin as I can get at 41,000 down here. And then if you have your Bitcoin, you maybe say, well, if Bitcoin actually flags, I can't afford to be in it for if Bitcoin goes to 37,000, right? So maybe you have a stop loss and you have for Bitcoin, you put 37,000 in here and those will be on your order books. And that is how that works. Um, Fairly simple. I mean, you have all this other neat, you know, little market stuff. And this is, you're going to see, this is exactly what every exchange looks like that is not Coinbase. Um, Kraken looks a little bit different. I think you have to uh, turn off some, turn on some of these features to see everything. But really, Coinbase is incredibly, 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 incredibly basic. And it doesn't have the features. I mean, it's convenient and it's nice to be able to, at a glance, look at your portfolio and what's going on with everything. Um, and this really doesn't have it, you know, you can go to your portfolio, but th as far as I can tell, there's no way to track specific ones, specific assets in an at a glance sort of a thing and see what's going on with it quite like the regular Coinbase. Um, so I use other applications and I use normal Coinbase. Typically I will put in a limit buy order on Coinbase Pro. And if it's something I intend to hold on to for a very long time, it either goes to my wallet or it goes over to Coinbase regular. So it can be tallied up there. And that is the way that I do it. Especially if, um, for instance, the reason that I do that is because of fees. And it's not Coinbase that's that would be charging you a fee. It's if you're using Ethereum and you want to take your uh, Ethereum from one address to another address ethereum will charge you a fee for that um, bitcoin has a small fee for that 
And but if you want to go from here to your Coinbase Pro to your Coinbase normal account, there is no fees whatsoever at all, which is why, you know, you may want to do that. Easier to keep track of everything and tally everything up. And it doesn't cost you anything. But of course, if you plan on holding for six months, just put it in your own personal wallet, your hardware wallet or software wallet on your computer. Probably a hardware wallet be the best there, guys. So that, in a nutshell, is what Coinbase Pro looks like effectively how you use it right um of course i'm not going to go into all of all of my stuff and go through every single tab on here but this is everything else is pretty straightforward it's just the figuring out the market the limits and the stops the other thing that i'll bring up is you have all of these different you have all these different markets right so you don't have to trade us dollars you could trade us tether which is a stable coin um USDT Tether, US Tether, uh, US Dollar Coin, or everything runs on Bitcoin or DAI. And that Ethereum has Ethereum exchanges too. It looks like we have Ethereum to Cardano to Link to Bat to Mana and Sushi. So I can take, if I have a Ethereum and I want Cardano, I can do the very same thing over here with market limit and stop orders as you could with US dollars, except for paying, I'm going to use Ethereum or I'm going to use um, Cardano. And that is one way to not even touch the Federal Reserve dollars, which I recommend doing everything in crypto. Um, many, many reasons for that, but that's a whole nother video. But once you have something in Bitcoin, you can pretty much buy anything. Anything you can buy with US dollars, you could pretty well buy with Bitcoin. Everyone's always going to take your Bitcoin. And uh, yeah, the markets work exactly the same regardless you're using um, Bitcoin. But you'll find that, like, for instance, Sol, you can only buy Sol with U.S. dollars and Bitcoin. I, I can't buy it with U.S. coin, U.S. dollar coin. You might be able to buy it with Tether. But Sol, like, for instance, you have to use U.S. dollars or you have to use Bitcoin. It's just how you have to buy it um, in the future. That will probably expand. Uh, maybe on other exchanges they have Sol, Sol has links to other sorts of things but uh, yeah so that is in a nutshell Coinbase Pro and if you can figure out Coinbase Pro this is essentially every exchange on the planet the world everywhere and that is what it is so guys um, with that you know like I said there's not a whole heck of a lot going on South Africa wants to set withdrawal limits Mm, yay you know i mean these banks they just uh they won't give up of course um why use a bank you don't need to worry about withdrawal limits if you're not using banks the market is wishy-washy trying to figure out what it's going to do and uh yeah um solana is actually doing pretty good at 166 and I think there was another outlier in here that was doing pretty well, but maybe that one stopped pumping. A lot of these ones like XDZ, I don't even know. With that, guys, uh, you know, nothing exciting. We'll see what happens tomorrow. And with that, we're going to be out of here.